Oh, good morning. It is a cold and frosty morning. And uh, first leg of the journey. Let's get to the train station. Um, I have packed everything, which is good. That's a good start, isn't it? So, I've got my charges and my meds and all the important stuff. I'm wearing my Doc Martens, which um, obviously is great. They're just the worst things to wear when you're going through airport security because you have to take them off, which is really annoying. Like, I know it's got to be done, but <laughs> you're like basically stripping off. Then you go, laps up all the electronics in one, and then like your coat in your bag in another, and then your suitcase in another. And the whole social anxiety thing, you know, it's not the like, oh, I hope they don't find the the bags of cracking guns that I, you know, that I think are just going to appear in my suitcase. It's not that. It's uh, like, oh, what if I put the things in the wrong things and oh, all that. Anyways, once that bit's done, I tend to relax a bit then. Right. Anyways, hands are getting cold already, so I'm going to put you away, back in my pocket, and uh, head off to the train station. Mm. My train's been cancelled. Oh, for God's sakes. Best late plans of the uh, mice and men Afghan and Clay, innit? So, instead of getting the train to Parkway and then a lift to the station, I'm having to get a train to Cardiff and then a train to Bristol Temple Meet, and then a bus to the airport. <sighs> Great way to start the day. Right, two trains and a bus later, and I'm finally here at the airport. And um, thankfully I don't have to go through, um, like dropping off my bag and stuff, because it's all hand luggage, but I do have to get through security, and uh, that's a bit I don't like. Well, there's a bit of a queue, but to be honest, that shouldn't be too bad. Maybe about 20 minutes, something like that, hopefully. <sighs> well, that's that done. And I've got um, about 20 minutes before they announce what date I'm at. So enough time to grab a drink and maybe a sandwich and some fruit pastels for the flight. Leon is at gate 15. I've already been walking for about 10 minutes to get here in a minute. Time to board the plane while I'm flying. Why don't you go back home and see what mummy's up to? Hello there. <laughs> now, for those who you might be a little bit older, you'll remember Listen With Mother. Well, this is Listen With Mummy. <laughs> now, are we sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. Have we got a drink? Yes, we have. Thank you. <laughs> The attic room was empty now, save for Clara and the old woman. Both Davy and Charlie had repaired to the ship to take a sup and remember the old friend. Here, lass, they can't bide here all on your own. Come sit with me a spell, Ma Duckworth coaxed. There's nowt comes good and moping about summat you can't change. Downstairs, in her dismal kitchen, the old woman lit a solitary candle and placed it on the mantel shelf. Not knowing what else to do, she busied herself with the fire, muttering about the wet coal and lack of kindling. <laughs> There's plenty of sticks to be had for them as willing to look. That Charlie can be a lazy bugger, and this chimney is. Eh? Clara paid no heed, being lost in her own thoughts, as for the first time in her life, she realised that she was totally alone. What will I do without, without them? How can I? She shivered. Ma Duckworth touched her hands. Eee, a nithered lass. Get closer to the fire. It's catching now. Clara held her hands to the flames, grateful for the warmth it gave. Better? Clara gave a nod. 
I'll put poker in the fire. Charlie back found half a bottle of red wine outside ship. Ma Duckworth smiled and patted Clara's shoulder. Bit of red, otted up, we'll see you right. The wine fizzed as the woman dipped the glowing poker into the jug. Good for all the ales thee, this is, she remarked, pressing the beaker into Clara's hands. Drink up, lass, every last drop, she commanded. The wine was old and rather vinegary, but Clara drank it all the same. Ma Duckworth gave a satisfied nod. Good lass. The wine coursing, coursing through her veins gave Clara the courage to speak. Ma, what will I do? How, how can I? She flushed. Surely my thoughts should be for my father, not myself. I should be praying for his soul, praying that he's at peace now, not dwelling on my own plight. And yet I must, if only for our bairn. It was as if the old woman had read her thoughts, for she grasped Clara's hands tight in hers. I know, lass. When shock wears off, truth that matter shows itself. So what will... What will come of ye? Clara nodded. Ma Duckworth let go of Clara's hands. Seems to me, lass, you're going to need all thy wits about thee. And I might a good fortune. She paused as if chewing over the advice she was about to give. Now listen good to me, lass. Them as gets on in this life either takes it or earns it. No bugger gets out for nout. She wagged her fingers sagely. Take my nephew. He keeps his eyes open and finds things. You know what I mean? Taint thieving as such. Not if folk leave things about. But I don't know how to. Clara shook her head. No, I don't think you do, Ma Duckworth smiled. Not sharp enough. There's something you could do. Though I fear you don't have the touch, she went on. What touch is that? Clara asked. Mm, how light fingered are you? Clara looked down at her hands, her fingers red and cracked. Mm, muttered the old woman. You need better than them for taking a gentleman's pocketbook. Clara was taken aback by Ma Duckworth's words. But held a tongue. So I must work. Work, yes, you must work. Yet the work may not suit thee. I will do what I must. Tell me, what can I work at? Hmm. Ma Duckworth squinted across at the young woman. Hmm. Just the note, lass, in next court, Mary Toft. Uh, the one with red lips and curls? The old woman nodded. They say, Clara flushed, they say she has lots of um, men friends. <laughs> Ma Duckworth laughed. Men friends indeed, she turned to face Clara. Men who give her money in exchange for, for favours. Do they know what those favours are? I, I think so, Clara stuttered. Do you think you could give favours? Clara shook her head. I'm with child. Ah, oh, my dear, there's more than one way to satisfy a man. The old woman whispered something in her ear. <gasps> no, I couldn't. Ma Duckworth shrugged. You get used to it. What would Hal think of me? How could I? The very thought of betraying her husband, even in desperation, sickened her. Isn't there something else? I can sew. So can every lass, older and seven. I, I can cook, when we have some at worth the pot. Ah, lass, so they can. But what good is it when they ain't out to cook? 
She shook her head. Who'll buy Tata gruel, lass? Clara lifted her head defiantly. Then I will turn my hand to being a laundress. Ma Duckworth patted Clara's hands. Along with half the woman this fair city. No, lass. There's only so many sheets to wash and shirts to press. Then what must I do, Ma? What must I do? The defiant tone had gone from her voice. For now the reality of her situation finally dawned. And our child, what of our child so near to be born? The old woman sighed deeply. I've given thee what advice I can. Of the child I say nought, but that's that its fate lies in the hand of God and thine too, she added. Then I must, Clara bit her lip. The old woman placed her hand gently on Clara's shoulder. Nay, lass, there's one choice left, though I'm loath to tell of it. And if it weren't for Ben, I'd say nout, she muttered. Well, what is that, Ma? Clara asked, although she already knew the answer. Ma Duckworth sat down beside her. It's poor house, lass. The poor house is all that's left. Oh, blimey. Oh, oh Clara. Oh, Clara. Chin chin, mother. Chin cheers. <laughs> well, that was lovely. Mum then. We've arrived in France and it's raining. I mean, last time I was lucky and it was beautiful sunshine. Of course, it's going to rain this time. I'm wild and I bring the rain with me. Anyways, got to get through security and then get out, have a bit of fresh air. So I am here in Lyon, we're in a, we're in, it says Paddy's Corner, so we're in an Irish bar, an Irish bar in Lyon, but it's so nice. So this is, this is all the people, so many people, and they all go hand in hand. And these are all French people, that's my brother, he's not French, but these are all French people. Uh, he lived in Swansea for a while, he said he really liked it, I'm like, I've never met a person that likes Swansea. Um, not even people from Swansea, but these are these are all friends. Isn't this nice? Hiya. Hello. Hi. Just saying that you're the person that likes Swansea. The person. I love Swansea. You speak Welsh. I live in Swansea. Yeah, and I speak Welsh. And you speak Welsh. Shara di Camraig. Yeah, what? Nagadi. 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 No, I'm having food. I'm having a veggie burger, but it's got like a whole camembert. Oh, please. It's a few drinks later. Um, so my brother has some friends in Leon, like thrifter friends, which is quite nice. Um, one of which was Melatine, and it's her birthday. Bon anniversaire, Melatine. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it was a fun night out. Really, really nice. So um, we shall be seeing them again at some point over the weekend because they're going to come thrifting with us on Sunday, which is cool. But um, for tonight, obviously it's been a travel day, so I kind of want to you know, get to bed and have some sleep. But gonna be up early uh, to go to some flea market somewhere, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, it's been a good day so far. And I've only been here a few hours, yeah. Anyways, bye-bye now, bye-bye.